Hi, my name is Erin Johnson. I work for the Isaac Walton League. And today I'm going to show you an activity from our Creek Freaks curriculum called Erosion in the Zone. Erosion in the Zone is an activity that shows how plant roots keep soil in place. You'll have two containers, one with bare soil and one with vegetated soil. We'll simulate a rainstorm and see which one has the most erosion. So let me tell you the materials you're going to need and how to set it up. You're going to need two cat litter trays that are the same size. You'll need two five gallon buckets. You'll need two large coffee cans and two fine mesh strainers that will fit inside the coffee cans. You'll need two coffee filters. You'll need a ruler, two plastic cups, a measuring cup, a watering can with a sprinkler head. You'll need a drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit, a few extra gallons of water, You'll need some grass. You can either dig this up from outside, purchase it at a hardware store, or grow your own. And you'll need some potting soil. The first thing you're going to want to do is drill one hole in each of the kitty litter pans at an equal distance up from the bottom. So you can see the holes I have marked here. They're about two inches up from the bottom. After you're done drilling the holes, your next step is to fill up your cat litter trays with our different types of soil. So the first tray you're going to fill with just a simple potting soil and you want that potting soil level to be right at the bottom of the hole that you drilled. This other tray we filled with uh, the sod that we got from outside and we want the bottom of the dirt to be at the base of that hole. So the grass will stick up higher but the dirt level is at the hole. Um, the next thing we're going to do is talk about the cups. So I had two cups and what you're going to do is cut one in half so it'll look like this. So you're going to want to cut this cup in half. You can really just use one cup, but I usually mess up on one of them. So you might need two. So, so after you're done cutting the cup, you're going to have two halves that are going to act as funnels for the water that's going to come out of those holes. Like you can see, we taped the cups onto the trays right below the holes so that they act as a funnel, which will be important for our next step. So the cups that we just taped on are going to act as a funnel for the water that we're pouring onto these two different soil types. One thing that we need to do is prop each bucket up so that when we pour the water on, it runs out. One thing that you can use is a 2x4 to prop both up at equal heights. We don't have that today, so we're going to improvise. You can use uh, identical boxes to prop them up, or you can use a stack of identical textbooks. So we'll go ahead and prop this up. We're going to use the textbooks right now. So as you can see, they're at equal heights right now. The next step is going to involve the bucket, the coffee can, the coffee filter, and the strainer. To put this together, you're going to put your coffee filter inside of your strainer and place the strainer on top of the coffee can. Then you're going to set this on top of the bucket. So now that all the setup is complete, we're actually ready to run the activity. So we're going to be pouring water on each of these two different soil types and observing the amount of erosion that comes off of them. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're consistent with the amount of water that you're pouring onto the different soil types. So what I have here is a measuring cup. I'm going to measure out four cups of water. And I'm going to put that into our watering can. So it's important to note here that the watering can has a sprinkler head. We like to use that to demonstrate actual rain. So if either you or your students are pouring this water on, you're going to want to make sure you pour evenly over the whole tray to imitate real rain. So we're going to go ahead and pour this one off. And as you can start to see in the bottom, some of the water is going to start coming out onto our coffee filter and into our strainer. That's catching the water that's coming out and the coffee filter is able to filter out that dirt or the erosion that we're showing here. So we're going to let that one run. Sometimes the little hole here clogs and you might have to open it up with your finger to let some more water out. So we'll let that one run out while we do our soil here. Now we did pre-soak the soils before we did this experiment. We had very dry potting soil, so we wanted to make sure that all the water we poured on wasn't just sucked up 
by the potting soil. We did have a big rain last night, so our uh, other soil was pretty wet, but we made sure that they were equally soaked here. So as you can see, the water is coming out the hole for this one as well, and we'll help this one out a little bit. It's probably a little clogged here. So at this point, you can just wait for them all to run out, and then we'll take a look at our filters and see what we've got. Erosion in the zone is a great visual activity that shows students how plant roots keep soil in place. As you can see from the two different trays, the one without any plant roots had a lot more erosion, a lot more dirt coming off of it than the one with plant roots. Erosion becomes a problem when it gets into streams because it affects the organisms in the stream. So it, when the streams are really cloudy, it can clog fish's gills and prevent them from breathing. It can prevent them from finding their food, and it can also coat the stream bottom, which takes away habitat for the aquatic macroinvertebrates, which are basically the fish's food. A good extension activity for this would be to start a class discussion about how erosion affects uh, the food web and how that can further affect humans. For more information and to check out the Creek Freaks curriculum, please visit our website.